Welcome to the Parker Daniel Show, where amazing stories are shared and hope is given. Y'all know what that sound is? That's the sound of deer. We have to be real quiet because we're going hunting today with a young man by the name of Michael Edmonds. The topic of this show is A Blind Man Goes Hunting. Now, I don't know if you all like to hunt, but I definitely wish that I could do it. And Michael is going to show us his technique in which he used for hunting. I want y'all to stay tuned and check out part one of his story. Thank you. Y'all ain't going to believe this. A blind man goes hunting. Even I was a bit surprised when I heard about this, but with the emergence of technology, anything is possible for a blind person. But I'm not gonna give away any of the, the good news, any of the surprises. I want you all to stick around. Make sure to subscribe if you are a new viewer and if you are a, uh, a return viewer, continue to support the Parker Daniel Show. And again, thank you. So we're not gonna keep you all in suspense. I'm gonna bring you the man of the 15 minutes or the 20 minutes or the man of the hour, which I always want to say, Mr. Michael Edmonds. What's up, man? How you doing, Anthony? I'm doing fine. Uh, Mike, briefly, you know, go into a little bit about where you from and how long you lived, where you lived, and, uh, you know, just kind of walk us a little bit through your life history a little bit before we get to the goodies. We're going to keep them waiting for a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. Um, like he said, my name is Michael Edmonds. Uh, I'm 48 years old. I live in a little small town called Inman, South Carolina. It's in Spartanburg County. We're in the upstate of South Carolina. I've been um, living in the same area all my life. Okay. Now, uh, you have any kids, Mike? I have a 21-year-old daughter and a 28-year-old son. And my son and his girlfriend have mine and my wife's first grandchild. He's uh, my grandson, 16 months old, here coming just... weeks, and I'm married to my beautiful wife, uh, Toby Edmonds. We just celebrated 21 years in May. Okay. Now, recently, you lost your sight due to a very tragic accident. Do you mind talking a little bit about that? Yeah, that'd be, that, I don't have a problem. Okay. Um, September the 10th, 2013, I got up like I normally did, you know, start my daily routine, got up, got myself dressed, went to work that morning, doing, you know, everything I was supposed to be doing at work, uh, things I've done numerous times throughout the day for the past six, six months or so. And I was having to make some um, solution to put in the liquid asphalt that we made at the company. Um, I worked for a liquid asphalt company. And when I was making the, the solution, I was standing on top of a 2,800 gallon tank that was filled with water and had been heated with steam to about 145 degrees. What we did was we added two chemicals to this tank of water to make the solution to regulate the pH balance for the liquid asphalt. I put the first chemical in and the last chemical, it was called caustic soda. It's an alkaline based powder. And I put 15 pounds of this alkaline based powder in the tank of water. And when it hit the top of the water, when I poured it in the top of the tank, something reacted back and everything blew out the top of the tank on me. Um, my perception of it is if you've ever dropped a soda bottle and the top blow off of it and it spew everywhere. But once, once it come out of that water, uh, out of that tank with the steam already heated that water to like 145 degrees, once you add caustic soda to it, it gets extremely hot and it covered the front of my body. Uh, I climbed myself down off the tank, went to the wash station, 
And once I got there, my other uh, co-workers had also arrived there as well. And they started hosing me down. I had to be airlifted to the Augusta, Georgia Burn Center from where I was at on my job. It was like a 45 minute helicopter ride. And once I arrived at the Augusta, Georgia Burn Center, they got me out of the helicopter and they were wheeling me inside. And I heard someone say, this is going to be a bumpy ride, Mr. Edmonds. And that's the last thing I remember for eight weeks. They placed me in a medical induced coma. Wow. What happened when you came out of the coma? Um, during, during the coma, I had been burned over 40% of the front of my body. I inhaled it, it burnt my lungs, my throat, and I acquired what they call ARDS. It's acute respiratory distress syndrome. They were having to come in like every 20, 30 minutes and suction my lungs out where they were burned so bad. Mm. <clears throat> and after they, the accident happened on a Tuesday, that Friday they called my wife in and told her that she needed to call my family that I was not going to make it to that weekend. But apparently, God had other plans for me. I and, hear that. You know, after they got my lung staple, I had four major skin graft surgeries. Um, the front of both of my thighs, from like my up to my waist, the whole left side of my stomach, underneath the biceps of both arms, and pretty much the whole right side of my head is a skin graft. Mm. And, uh, everyone tells me they've done an exceptional job on the skin grafts. Once they got all the, the grafts and thought I was stable enough to start waking back up, that's when I realized I could not sleep. And living 42 years of your life, being able to see pretty much anything you wanted to and had, had good vision, that was a pretty hard thing to have to deal with. Wow. God, well, God, like you said, God is good. I really would, would not mind focusing on this particular issue, but we can bring you back and, and talk about that, man. How did you feel afterwards when you when you had come out the, the coma and realized that you, um, you know, you had received a great deal of burns over over forty percent of your body and you were blind? What was your state of mind then? Uh, it wasn't that great. Um, First feelings, first thoughts that were started going through my mind were, okay, you're never gonna be able to see your wife or your kids or, uh, my daughter was 16 at the time and she had, was getting ready to get her license and I was thinking, you ain't gonna be able to see her drive off for the first time. You're not gonna be able to see her when she gets married, walk down the aisle. Uh, and I was just all the negative things of what I wasn't gonna be able to do. And I was in the room one night, my wife had already left, and I was sitting there starting, you know, getting in the pity party deal, you know? Mm. And I mean, it's just like me and you're sitting here having this conversation, like I can hear you. I was sitting there that night and I heard this voice just clear as day and say, all right, buddy, you got a choice to make. Either you can sit and feel sorry for yourself, or you can make the best of the situation. And, and I, you, and I definitely I, I, my best to choose to make the best of the situation. Okay. Now, speaking of the best of your situation, um, what happened next in terms of after you uh, accepted uh, your your impairment? Impairment. Uh, what was the next step in your life? Um, just basically learning, you know, how to do things in my house because uh, I didn't know quite what steps to take. Uh, my doctors really didn't tell me anything of what where I needed to go or what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And for like the first two years, you know, I was kind of, I felt like I was on my own because nobody had told me about the South Carolina Commission of the Blind. Mm -hmm. And during this time, I had, you know, got in back in some spots of feeling like I was alone again mm -hmm. and didn't know quite what to do and I started getting into some de depression stuff and I'm again I'm sitting at the house one day with nobody else around 
and I'm just wondering why in the crap am I having to go through this? And I heard the voice again, and it said, I've got you right where I want you. I got you back. Okay. Now, definitely, as I mentioned, this can definitely make for a great story, but we want to, and not trying to just, you know, make this a small, uh, you know, part or just sweep it under the rug, because, I mean, man, God definitely, you know, has a purpose for each and every one of us. Let's talk about the, the, the activities that you used to perform before you lost your sight and you uh, continue to do that particular activity afterwards and the, and, the, and the changes that you had to go through in order to make this particular <clears throat> event uh, accessible for you. Because that was very you need to be oh, 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 oh. Yes, I am hopeful for today. Take this music and use it. Let it take you away. Let it take